Hello everybody, John from Hillbilly Wine 101 and I've been doing a holiday series so to speak. I've been doing a lot of, it is the holiday season and I've been doing a lot of champagnes. I love champagne year round. I use it, I eat it, uh, excuse me, I drink it with a lot of my dinners um, but a lot of people don't. But New Year's is coming up, of course, um, obviously champagne is every kind of celebration in the world. But I've been putting them out a little extra now, sticking them out on Fridays uh, for everybody for uh, basically for New Year's. I also did a, uh, a uh, wine from Israel uh, that I just posted that I thought was really interesting. I'd never had one before. And I thought it'd be cool to put out for the holidays if you want a traditional wine, well, I don't say traditional, but a wine that's made from the Holy Land. The Bible's full of talking about the, um, uh, you know, wine. And I thought a wine from grapes grown in the Judean hills would be pretty cool. It was actually pretty good. It was a serious wine, what I call serious wine. Um, it was a Cabernet, and it was nice. It was also happened to be uh, kosher if you want to use it uh, for any kind of Jewish celebrations. So tonight, in keeping with the spirit, I'm going to do, um, I have a Manischewitz, all right? Concord grape, 11% ABV, $6.99, made in New York. And I'll tell you real quick about the history of this. Um, this originally a guy named Abramson. Uh, he was a Russian immigrant. His last name was Abramson. I think he was a rabbi. He immigrated to the United States in 1888, and for whatever reason, he he bought a uh, he, he couldn't go under his name, so he bought a passport for, from a deceased person, and the name on the passport was Manischewitz. So when he got here, he started a company, Manischewitz, and originally it was in believe it or not, it was in uh, Cincinnati, and they made mainly matzah and no wine, a lot of um, basically kosher foods. Uh, they later moved to New York. Then in 1947, a company called Monarch was going to make some kosher wine. But they didn't want to use their name because it was unknown. So they made a deal with Manischewitz, if they can use their name, since Manischewitz didn't make any wine. And they cut a deal and they used the name uh, Manischewitz for their wine. Their wine, at this time the company was in New York, and they were sourcing their grapes from, from, the, from the area. And the local grape in New York, uh, upstate New York, really the Northeast, is Concord, Catawba, uh, Niagara. There's several, several of them. Um, they're the main ones, and they have kind of a unique taste, um, especially if you're used to the uh, vinifera grapes, the, the native grapes of Europe that, that most wines are made of. But these have a unique taste. Uh, I used to grow them in my yard, and I used to eat them. Um, they're very hearty for, for, you know, for that area, and but they're not the greatest for making wine. The Concord grape is used uh, in Walsh's jelly and in um, uh, Walsh's grape juice, and it's a bitter grape. It's the juice is bitter. It's not terrible bitter bitter, but it's it's bitter, and therefore it is sweetened. Okay, they use a lot of sugar to kind of cover up that taste, and this is supposedly I haven't had it. A sweet wine, um, and I would assume it's Concord grape. It's to cover up the bitterness of the grape. Um, this says 51%. Um, you know, not less than 51% Concord. I don't know if if you have to be. I don't know New York laws for wine. If it has to be at least 51% made out of grapes to be called wine, why they would put you know, obviously most wines are 100%. Uh, I don't know if that means 51% Concord grape and then some other grapes. I don't think so. I think it means basically juice and the 51% of it comes from the Concord grape. I, I'm not sure. It's an odd thing to have on there. Um, but anyway, this is used uh, by a lot of Jewish um, ceremonies and holidays. Uh, and so let, let, anyway, let's give it a, let's give it a taste here. Kind of a brownish purple, almost looks like a uh, aged, oxidized wine. I'm smelling a pungent odor from here. Uh, let me see. Well, if you've grown the grapes, it smells exactly like the grapes. Um, it smells very close, really just like uh, Walsh's grape juice is what it smells like, and I mean exactly like Walsh's grape juice. Uh, Uh, 
I'm not really getting anything else out of it. Man, let me see. No, just that strong uh, Concord grape smell. It's 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 almost sweeter than Welch's grape juice. Uh, basically, it's it's exactly the same or just a sweeter version. If you look, I looked at some of the um, advertisements from this <clears throat> from the '70s. They had Sammy Davis Jr. used to advertise and stuff like that. And it's not really advertised as a traditional wine. It's advertised um, as as an affordable wine uh, for for. You know, for wine, basically just for for, for holidays, and um, maybe an aperitif. Um, they have some cocktails that it, that they're hawking with it, and um, they have it with ice. Uh, matter of fact, let me get my glass ice real quick here. Um, I want to try this. Uh, the reason that um, you know this isn't a, a quality wine. I mean, it's it, I told you what it tastes like. It's just unbelievable. Uh, Better without the ice. Um, a lot of kids drink this wine. This is what this wine is known for. It's because um, it's sweet. It's easy to drink. You don't have to like wine. You don't have to like alcohol. You can get a cheap buzz off of it, and you can get it down pretty easily. Um, and it's in tra Jewish tradition. Now, this is not a great wine, but uh, some of their traditions, from what I understand, they might have. They go through the, the reading the Torah, and at certain points, uh, they they may have to drink. You know, take a kind of a, like a toast. You know maybe down that whole thing like that and so you can't really you don't need an expensive wine or something with a lot of uh, depth and character and all for that um, and since this has been um, so ingrained in the Northeast and, and, and for all the years that it, when it first started before there were probably really good wines from Israel or real good kosher wines it just became kind of a tradition is why people use it what this is, is good for other than for that tradition and you don't need to do that like I said I did a real good one with my Ben Ami if you want to uh, have a more serious wine for dinner and stuff like that that's kosher or just have a good wine uh, from Israel but um, I would use this um, like I would use a soda so wherever you drink soda wherever you drink soda pop is where you can drink this so if you drink soda with dinner drink this with dinner if you drink juice with dinner grape juice or apple juice you could drink this with dinner right you get a little bit of alcohol in there you can't taste or anything but, but it's in there uh, so that's where I would, uh, if you're thinking of using this, I would use it like I use a soft drink or like I use a juice. Um, you know, I guess sitting around watching a movie, you have a glass with ice, you sip it. I can see where this is appealing uh, to some people. If you're thinking of a wine wine, like a traditional wine, and we're going to sit here and we're going to pick stuff out of it, we're going to think what we're going to pair with it, we're going to try and get, this, this is not, this is not, this is not it. But, if, but for what I said, it, then this is it. I want to try it anyway. Now you know what it tastes like. It tastes like a, um, a sweet grape juice, and that's exactly what it tastes like. And that's all it tastes like. Um, and that's, I think, the um, where you would use this this uh, this wine. So, um, from Hillbilly Wine 101, everybody, have a wonderful holiday. And I'll see you at the next one.